You come that. Come and shout glory. glory. So the creation of wealth, success through our inheritance in Christ Jesus. The Old Testament man, the creation of wealth all supernatural in his life. Shout glory. glory. Who caught that? So write that definition down for now. Let me explain it now. It says the divine influence of the spirit. What we all must understand is that the blessing is a divine influence of the spirit. It's a divine influence in the Christian. So when it comes to the New Testament, it's the divine instrument, a divine influence of the Holy Ghost in the spirit of the Christian. In the spirit. The blessing is in your spirit. In the Old Testament, the blessing was on them. Because, oh, I'll come to that, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Come on, shout glory. glory. I don't have to rush into it. But you understand what I'm saying? Yes, so with regards to the Old Testament man, blessing was as a result of a covenant. With regards to the New Testament man, the blessing as a result of the promise. I'll come to that right now. I'm teaching you a lot of things. But what you should understand, it's not just the teaching and the hearing. That the blessing is a divine influence. So Pastor Obed comes. When we say the blessing is on Pastor Obed, if it was an Old Testament man, the blessing will be on him. He is a New Testament man, two of us. So the blessing is in him, in his spirit. Just like the eternal life is in your spirit. The blessing of the Lord is in your spirit. That blessing is a divine influence. Because the blessing is in the spirit, it is, what is it? It is a divine influence of the Holy Ghost. That provokes. So the blessing is an influence. It's a spiritual influence. I said what? It's a spiritual influence. When we say something is a spiritual influence, it is likened to when David was holding a stone and he threw the stone. Goliath or Goliath, whatever you pronounce it, anyhow you pronounce it, had his armor, true or false, and it was just left with this side. Now, how did that sling or that stone go right to where there was no covering? How? Through the divine influence of the Spirit. So he threw the stone. Then the Holy Ghost picked the stone. Instead of going to his chest, he took it to where the stone must hit. It's a, it's a, that, that happening is a kind of orche a divine orchestration of the Holy Spirit himself. It's a working of the Holy Spirit to cause Goliath to fall. True or false? We call such a happening a divine influence. Or we say Peter is in prison. The church prays. Then an angel goes there. And then he's in chains. Then the chains break of their own accord. Nobody takes key, nothing. The chains are removed. Then Peter is coming out of the prison. Doesn't know that. And coming out of prison as if it's a vision he's having. So Peter thought he was dreaming and having a vision when he was coming out of the prison. But he was not dreaming. It's a divine influence to make Peter rise up follow the angel and think that it's a vision until he comes out of the prison gate and the big gate only to realize that it was not a vision. It's a divine influence. Is that normal? Is that natural? When Jesus takes the loaves of bread and bless it and it multiplies, how can loaves feed all those people? It's a divine influence of the Holy Spirit. Who understands divine influence of the Spirit now? So we say the blessing also is a divine influence of the Holy Spirit. But this time, that influence is not to take you out of prison or kill Goliath. But that is of the Spirit. So 
throughout the, the Bible from Genesis to Revelation whenever anybody wherever we talk about the manifestations of blessings or wealth in the hands of any individual the Holy Ghost is involved yes, write it down because sometimes when we talk about the blessing we talk about it as if the Holy Ghost is not involved wherever you see the manifestations of the blessings of the Lord, the Lord throughout the scriptures the Holy Ghost is the one that orchestrated that manifestation right? don't ever forget it and you see the role of the Holy Spirit even in the New Testament in the blessing when we go there and I'll show you some scriptures right now come on shout glory I'm preparing you for 2022 I said what Did you hear what I said? The grace I'm asking God for is the grace that can multiply 30 people to 300. And then from 300 to 3,000. And 3,000 to 30,000. It's a special grace. Special grace. It's a multiplication grace. There are three dimensions of power. <laughs> so when I look at you like this, do you know what I see? I see myself preaching to tens of thousands of people Glory. and you are sitting in it and say hey, I was in the church where I didn't tell <laughs> that's what I'm telling you so when I look at you quietly like this I'm imagining you saying I was part of them when we were in Adenta <laughs> we are building a church without walls we are building it based on scriptures it says for unto him shall all the gathering of the people be the scriptures cannot be broken that one was just by the way, two of us. I'm trying to show you scriptures that you live on. Scriptures that you live on. Scriptures that you live, you live on scriptures. Jesus, God, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, two of us. But by every, some of you live on bread too much. Janino <laughs> Dawson, live on the word. Do you know what I said? Live on the word. Shout glory. glory. So, he is a New Testament man, two of us, a new Christian, a Christian. So the blessing is in his spirit. By reason of the blessing, the blessing in his spirit causes the Holy Ghost also in him to divinely influence things in such a way that there is a creation of wealth in his life. How the Holy Ghost influences the things is not up to you. Is it up to you? No, sir. Don't know. Whoever I just said there. So it's a divine influence. The purpose of this particular influence of the spirit. Let me say that statement again. The purpose of this particular divine influence of the spirit is to create wealth or to provoke the creation of wealth. That is why the blessing is on or was on the Old Testament man and the blessing is in the New Testament man. Because throughout the scriptures, God has always wanted people to walk in the blessing. And they did. So we mentioned names in the scriptures like Isaac. Throughout the scriptures. We talk about Noah. We talk about Job. Two of us. That the scripture says he was the big man in the east. He was what? We talk about Abraham. We talk about Jacob and all of those people. God has always wanted men to walk in the blessings. And God expects us to experience the blessings. Some of you are, experience, are not experiencing the blessings. You are experiencing a salary. Mm. But you are not experiencing the blessings. When you experience the blessings, it means that there is a divine operation, working, orchestration of the Holy Ghost that provokes the creation or the manufacturing of wealth in the life of Pastor Obed. Go ahead what I just said. Go understand what I just explained. That is, that is the blessing. A divine influence. Say a divine influence. So I can say a divine influence. Because because he is in the New Testament and is born again as a child of God, 
he is referred to as an heir of God. So it is the blessings that provoke the release of all that God has that he has willed to him through Christ to manifest before him. Without the blessing, the will will be there. The things will be there. But the blessing on his, on his life provokes the Holy Ghost. Do you hear what I said? Yes, provokes the Holy Ghost to divinely orchestrate the manifestation of his inheritance into his hands. If you have what I said, give me a wave and shout glory to that. Glory. Who understands what I'm teaching now? Otherwise, you can now sit down. But who understands what I'm just teaching now? You understand it? You understand? Give me a wave and shout glory. glory. Give me another wave and shout powerful. powerful. Who caught what I just said right now? Did you catch it, Mr. Africa? Oh, come and let me use that. Uh, come and stand there and let me use you. Is that not true? Now, Sister Afrida is here. If she was Miriam in the Old Testament, then the blessing of the Lord will be on, he, on her like it was on all the Israelites. The purpose of that blessing was to, in the Old Testament, was to cause the release of wealth through the operation of the Holy Ghost. Did you hear that? You understand that? In the New Testament, the blessing is in your spirit. Are you born again? Do you have eternal life in your spirit? You have righteousness in your spirit. You have love in your spirit. You have the Holy Ghost in your spirit. You have faith in your spirit. What else? You have glory in your spirit. You have authority in your spirit. Then you also have the blessing in your spirit as a deposit the purpose of that blessing in your spirit now as you are standing here is to also provoke the creation of wealth in your life through different channels but by the orchestration of the divine orchestration of the Holy Ghost or the divine working of the Holy Ghost or the divine influence of the Holy Ghost that means that the person who divinely influence the manifestation of that blessing is the Holy Ghost. Who heard that? And it, it, it's, he's going to divinely influence that for you to have wealth. The purpose of the blessing is wealth. It's success. It's prosperity. The purpose of it. Whoever I just said there. So do you understand now? So it's the Holy Ghost who will divinely influence or who will divinely work out the blessings through channels you may not know. But it is for the creation of wealth in your life. Now who heard what I just said? Mr. Frida, now you understand. Who understands Mr. Frida now? Is that not powerful? But the reason why I brought in the inheritance is that we all have an inheritance in Christ. Now, have you ever sang the song, We are heirs of the Father? If you sang it, lift up your hands and let me see. Now sing it and let me see. You can sing it in the microphone. We are family. We can you sing it again? We are heirs. So wait, you said we are an heir of the Father. What does that mean? What does that mean? You are the one to inherit your father's wealth. Who is the father we are talking about? God. So the scriptures actually call the Christian an heir of God. We'll go to that in Galatians 3. But we, I'm just trying to let you understand this thing properly. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Simple, simple. Eh? If I give you exams, 95. <laughs> so, we are called an heir of God. 
then we are called a joint heir with Christ. Why? Because Jesus is, the, is an heir of God. Then because we are born again, we are sons of God like Jesus is a son of God. So Jesus' is position is our position. Jesus' inheritance is our inheritance. So because Jesus is the son of God or the first son of God and is entitled to an inheritance by his father, we also, as people who are joined to Christ Jesus, are entitled to the same inheritance that Jesus is entitled to. You hear what I just said? Is this not simple? Practically. It's not practical. So because of that, we are joint heirs with the son. But we are heirs of the father. What is this inheritance? The inheritance is the whole world. <laughs> we'll go into that. So the scripture says, all things are yours. So what the Holy Ghost does is to divinely do what? Orchestrate the manufacturing of this wealth into your hands. Did you hear that? If you understand this, then you can't see yourself as somebody who will never make it in life. Because before you were even born, to be born again, this has been established. Hallelujah. How do I know? Since the scriptures foreseen. That's what we read. Galatians 3, what? 8. The scriptures foreseen. So it's after the foresight of God. Not after what you did or what you did not do. That's why I'm teaching on grace. I'm saying it's not like a favor. This one is after the foresight of God. The blessings. It's not after a favor God is doing us. Do you hear what I said? Yeah, in three we say Yanko Ponan Kasana who the own in him. Two of us. In God, what will you say? So God Himself, Yanko Ponan Kasana who the own in him. When He was foreseeing, we were not there to foresee with Him. Two of us. And made the, the blessing possible for all to be part of. That is all his own working. That is grace. That's the working of grace. So you don't sit in your room and say, Do I even deserve the blessing? Oh, this blessing I don't deserve. No. You don't deserve a, a you don't you don't you don't say do, do I deserve a Ferrari? It is a gift. Did I deserve it? You don't need to deserve it. The Ferrari you bought or you buy is as a result of the blessings. The blessing is as a result of God's foresight. Not God's favor. Did you hear what I just said? Oh, the way you are, you are responding. Whoever I just said there. Do you know why you are finding it difficult to catch what I'm sharing with you? You don't read this book. <laughs> so all the scriptures are, some of you, they are the, the first time you ever saw Galatians 3.8. Is that not true? I've seen this scripture about 500 times, this scripture. In fact, I went to a church, sat under the car park of the church for this scripture for a week. So in the morning, as people are going to work, my work at that time, because I had no ministry, was to take a chair and sit where the car park, Laboni car park, and meditate. When I, when I see that, so it's out of the meditation I'm giving you something. So to some of you, it's new. That is why you don't have to just write the book, write those, go and sleep, and meet me next week. You have to go back and listen. Sister Fira, did you now understand what I just said? It's good. Now you can sit down. Thank you very much. Who understood what I just said? That is what we refer to as the blessing. So when we say the blessing is in your spirit, or you are a blessed person, all Christians are blessed, we are saying that you are a candidate for the divine influence of the Holy Ghost. And I said that throughout the scriptures, whenever a person has touched the blessing like this, in his hands, tangibly, or has touched wealth, God's wealth, in his hands, it has always been by the orchestration of the Holy Ghost. It has always been. Did you write that one down? Can I now give you a scripture? Galatia, uh, Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. 
Say, this is powerful, man of God. Say, this is powerful, man of God. Are you ready for something? Is this not powerful? So if I'm walking in the streets, I'm driving in my car, and I have this consciousness that I'm blessed, the blessing is on my life. See, the blessing is on my life. Now, the kind of blessing we are living by now is called the blessing of Abraham. Or the Abrahamic blessing. Write it down. We are all living or working or functioning by the Abrahamic blessing. Or the blessing of Abraham. It looks like every teaching I teach, it goes to series. I don't even know what to do again. Come on, shout glory. Because <laughs> I have to close you people. Is that not powerful? But you have to follow this thing today. So you are walking on the streets and then you are telling yourself I'm blessed. I'm a blessed person. Is that not true? I'm walking in the blessings of the Lord that make it rich. Now I've moved it higher to or false. The blessing of Abraham so the Abrahamic blessing. Say it after me. Say the Abrahamic blessing. The Abrahamic blessing. Say it as you mean it. Say the Abrahamic blessings. Say it again, say the Abrahamic blessings. blessings. Say it again, say the Abrahamic blessings. blessings. So now we are all living by the Abrahamic blessings. Is that not powerful? powerful, Now, if you are walking and you say that the Abrahamic blessing is working in my life, it means that there is a supernatural influence of the Spirit that is working in your life. Now, I said something here. When you read throughout the scriptures, you will see that every time we see a, place, a person has been blessed or is blessed and has wealth and has riches, you look behind it and you see that it is a great Holy Ghost that orchestrated that wealth into the person's hands. Amen. It starts throughout for instance, the scriptures talk about Isaac. The Bible says Isaac sowed in the same year and he reaped a hundredfold. Whilst there was famine. Did you hear that? He reaped a hundredfold. And the Philistines envied him. And he became great. And became exceedingly great. To the point where he became the envy in the nation. I'm just using, I don't want to open those scriptures one by one. But when you study that, when you are listening to the message, you can open it for yourself. Two of us. That's concerning Isaac. Concerning Jacob, the man was blessed. He was blessed to the point where his name had to be changed to Israel, where we have a whole nation. The Israelites. Jews. Where some people say they go for what? Pilgrimage. Jews. Israel. How do you know about Israelites? Simple. We talk about Joseph. Who knows Joseph's story here? Okay, who doesn't know Joseph's story so that you narrate it to us? But look at Joseph. Look at what he went through. But the blessing was on, on him. Why? Now, there's the blessing of Abraham in the Old Covenant or Testament. Write it down. And there's the blessing of Abraham in the New Testament. The blessing of Abraham in the Old Testament is as a result of covenant, God's covenant with Abraham. Write it. So there's a blessing of Abraham where? In the Old, old Covenant, Old Testament. Then there's a blessing of Abraham in the New Testament. Say the Abrahamic blessing. Who is hearing what I'm saying now? All of you speak in tongues for two minutes right now. Just give us a, a for two minutes, two. I'm counting here. Malagadosh. Maledogosh. 
Malé de gauche. Ma chata kapala. Ma chate kepele gedesh. Mesheti atakata. Izifa aleketo alakataya. Ma soto kolosh. Ma ligado shebe. Ma redegele godosh. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In the hand. Ah, yes. Bake. Bele. Shout glory. Who heard something right now? Is that not powerful? So there is the Abrahamic blessing in the Old Testament. Then there is the Abrahamic blessing in the New Testament. The Abrahamic blessing in the Old Testament is as a result of God's covenant with Abraham. Write it down. And the Abrahamic blessing in the New Testament is as a result of God's promise to Abraham. What I'm sharing with you is new. It's not new to you. It's new to you. But I have to teach it. I have to teach it. So when you are praying, pray for me. Is that not true? Because I have things to teach that you may not be able to bear them. I can't swallow them. I have to bring them out. Two of us, dog. Jesus said I have many things to tell you. But you cannot bear them now. But you can bear them. You can bear. Can't you bear? So I refuse to be lazy this morning. In the name of Jesus. So we are feeling lazy small, small. Two of us. So I refuse to be lazy. I'm catching light. Okay, are you hearing what I'm saying? So there, I said what? There is what? The Abrahamic blessing in the Old Testament, which is as a result of covenant with Abraham. The Abrahamic blessing in the New Testament which is a result of the promise. Those two important are important. Now let's go to Abrahamic blessing. Genesis chapter 12. Oh. So there's a divine influence in my life that creates wealth. The measure of wealth creation depends on certain things that I'll show you, certain factors. The measure. Say the measure. Some of you have never seen anything at all. This year, you must see the blessings in operation. Amen. Oh, that's why I'm teaching you this. I said this year, if you go and put it down, close your book and sleep, and tell me I'm getting salary of 5,000. You don't know. 5,000 is too big. 5,000 is too big. Can't buy a tie for Pastor Bed. 5,000 buy a tie for you. I can 5,000 buy a tie for you. Why are you all laughing like that? I've told you, Ghana this can buy a tie for Pastor Bed. Look, is that true? <laughs> Some of you are opposing eh? it. Because you don't understand. I understand. You've not entered certain shops, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> By the time you come out, you can't buy two ties. You are at a, 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 a what? A tem- counterman to. A, Madina market. So you say, hey, I can buy 200 times with that. A logo Sumala tire. Do you know that there are certain people who don't buy certain things at certain places? They intentionally decide they don't buy. They are of class to them. Are we not of class than them? You know, it's important we understand these things I'm sharing with you. Yesterday, we were sharing on some of these things. I entered a shop some time back. When I entered the shop, and I took a test, how much is this? The guy mentioned the tie. I look at the tie. I look at the guy's face. I said, did you see the tie of the shop? (laughs) 
Is it the tie you are selling on the whole shop? <laughs> because, <laughs> because the socks, the socks and the tie alone can rent a shop. A logo shut tire. But man, is that not powerful? A man of God said something. He said he went to a shop to buy something. Now when he was buying, he said, things have become very expensive here. Nowadays, things have become expensive. And he said, the Holy Ghost says, shut up. <laughs> the things that have become expensive, are people not buying them. They are not, it's not things that have become expensive. It's your resources that have become small. <laughs> is that not true? Your resources are small. Things are expensive to you. When your resources are many, inexhaustible. True or false? It's, a whole, it's all about resources. It's not about economy. It's nothing is expensive. You went to a shop and buy a suit of 2,000 Ghana CDs. Somebody says 2,000 Ghana for a suit. 2,000 Ghana for a suit. Baza kawanu tu mohona ache o wa. Is that not true? You know why I'm saying all of these things? Refuse to be poor. Refuse to be broke. And I'll be sharing with you some of this. I don't know whether I should push it to Wednesday or something, but we'll be sharing with you some of these things. Don't desire to be rich just for yourself, but for the kingdom promote the kingdom. Refuse to be broke. There are a lot of things in the scriptures and sometimes when I read, I wish that day we have service. Do you know that? I read a scripture some time back. I said, I wish I had a service and I'll just call all of you to look. I, do, do you see what I'm seeing? It's so powerful, eh? It's so powerful. When he says, lay not Lay not up for yourself treasures on this earth and all that. He talks about laying up treasures in heaven. When he says that, it means a lot. Some people think it means that don't do anything on this earth. Don't have any money. Just be heavenly conscious and heavenly minded. That's a lie. It's a lie. Say, lay up treasures in heaven. How can you lay up treasures in heaven whilst you're on earth? How? Does I say that get money for the kingdom? Why? Because your giving to the kingdom is the laying up of treasures in heaven. You know, there are treasures by your giving, you are laying up. One day I'll teach you that scripture. Where is I'll be teaching is all of that. But don't, don't be broke because if you are broke, it means that you will not lay up any treasure for yourself in heaven. It doesn't mean that you are building houses like people say they had the vision. Houses were built in heaven and those were built in heaven. And we look at, that is not what he's talking about. It's like you are building up a treasure in the spirit realm. Do you know what that treasure is for? You want to know? You have to see it before. I won't show you today. So if you are broke or your giving has nothing to do with the kingdom, and all they are broken audio. That is why we teach. That's what we do, what? We teach. Genesis chapter 12. Shall I continue this thing on a Wednesday? Or you want to follow it? I'm, I'm waiting for your response. <laughs> so we talk about the Abrahamic blessings, true or false. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 3 quickly oh I just love this scripture is this not powerful I was in Genesis chapter 12 now I talk about blessing as a divine word I said the blessing is the divine word today we are keeping long Let keep long small and catch this thing obey any hope is holding here hope is holding here there's a hope of you two of us I've said, I say, refuse to be small. Refuse to be broke. The scripture says, a poor man's voice is not heard. 
Two of us. Poverty what? The only thing that's never made an impact is poverty. What has never made an What impact can poverty make? So you see, I'm driving you towards opening up your gates for there to be creation of wealth. And as I keep teaching, so that you know the purpose of that wealth. Amen. It's very important. Because one of the reasons why many Christians never walk in the blessing because they don't know what it is. Two, they never grow spiritually. Galatians 4, 2 or 4. Three, many Christians are selfish. Many Christians are what? Selfish. selfish. They are what? Selfish. selfish. They are not rich toward God that they serve. And I will show you those scriptures as we continue. As long as your heart is not set right, forget it. I said what? Forget it. We can pour all the oil in Ghana. We will place you in a barrel. By the time you come out, you still be broke. In a calabar, you still be broke. Your heart is not set right. I will teach you how to set your heart right. Do you want me to teach you a lot of things? Eh? Then let's go, go and break and come back. <laughs> Amen. But Galatians chapter, I, I want to show you some of the things that, teach that is very important. So I'm wondering, where do I put the blessing and where do I put the grace? Because now the grace is Sunday. Where do I put the blessings to? Is that not powerful? Very important. I'm walking in the blessings. I'm seeing divine influence in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit can, can influence a person to come and buy all your products within a day. True or false? The Holy Ghost can influence your boss to carry his part of the, the operation of blessing. That's instrument. Source. Instrument. You understand that? And carry your boss and the boss will say, I'm giving you a house. I'm giving you a car. I'm taking you to also take care of that organization in the U.S. Yeah. at once. True or false? True, the blessing, that's the blessing at work. That's what? The blessing, blessing at work. Who is hearing what I'm saying there? I'm you, so this year, you should understand this truth also. Who knows that what I'm teaching is very important? It's money matters. Now let me show you something here. So, we said through the scriptures, you see a lot of people blessed, true or false. And not just saying, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Jacob was not saying, I'm blessed. I received blessing from Isaac. Don't you know me? I'm blessed. Is that what he did? Yes, there was a manifestation of the blessing. There was a materialization of the blessing. Isaac also did not walk around and say, I'm blessed. Don't you know? My father had a covenant with God. My father is Abraham. He had a Is that what he did? I think Genesis 28 or something. He said, the man was so blessed that he became an envy in the place. Job was so blessed, true or false. Even Daniel as a slave was so blessed that he became a governor and became a governor of certain princes. Eh? And governor of certain jurisdictions. He was a, a slave. In fact, when he was taken to the king and the king saw him, the Bible says that they were ten times better than all those they came with. Blessing. How? Where, where, where is the blessing coming from? From Abraham. Old Testament Abraham. So I said the Old, Old Testament has the way the blessing operated. And the New Testament also. But it's all an orchestration of the Holy Ghost. Daniel was ten times better because the Holy Ghost made it so. True or false? Joseph was carried from the prison. Do you know what that... Do you think it's a story? It means you can be... It reminds me of one lady in our church, in our ministry years back, who was carried from... Is it reception or where? Carried for secretary to become the secretary of the whole entire boss. The boss entered the, the office that day and went downstairs and went straight to her and said, follow me and let's go. Carry all your things and follow me. 
That's the blessing. That's not the blessing. And this lady carried her things and followed the boss that day. There was promotion without letting. And he went straight, 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 straight. And the boss had a secretary. And then the boss said, the entire boss, the boss said, you to stay here. This is my secretary. You to become another secretary. Or two of you are all secretaries that day. It's not a story. Is it a story? Life. Maybe Dr. John will share his story small. You share it a little bit. Small one, just kitty kitty be. And you see that we are not talking about things that does not work in this church. Is that not true? That if not sat in a private jet before, doesn't mean private jet doesn't fly. It flies, but who not want to True or false? And I lie. If not use first class, you think first class doesn't work. You think it's a waste of money. The waste of resources, so economy, or in a bit do. My lad, that is a poor man's talk. When, when you become wealthy and you are working in the midst of people, you feel uncomfortable. Ah, a whole me with all these people here. Shall I get me a jet? Is that not true? You can't join the queue. You can't go to all these COVID protocols. You know what I'm telling you? Open your mind. Stop thinking like a house owner. Stop thinking like what? Stop thinking like it's my uncle who helped me. I'm waiting for that uncle. A little kosoto. Even if nobody exists on this earth, a tree can help you. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. Are you not shocked? Why? It was a ravens that fed a man. It was a fish that brought a tax. Yes, sir. How much more? Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. People say, ah, is today too can a fish bring a tax? <laughs> and of course, some both fish will bring a tax. <laughs> Do you, how many of you understand what I'm saying? When it comes to the operations of the Holy Ghost, don't forget this. Don't try to use your senses, you will fail. I said what? You fail. You fail. How can you explain a person who just enters the workplace and the boss calls for a meeting? And says, all of you, one, two, three, four, and says, including this staff, all of you, join the meeting. And the boss says, this person has been doing very well. But it looks like I've neglected him. Today, I want to honor him before all of you. I have a house here. I'm giving it to him. Will your boss give a house to somebody? Yes, sir. So the boss will be trimmed into. <laughs> there is no Timodim boss whose mind cannot be touched by the spirit. Oh, yes. Just for your sake. Yes, sir. Even Pharaoh yes, sir. was hardened by God. He was what? His heart was hard. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about anything. Some of you have not listened to my message on what? The exceeding greatness of his power. Eh? Go and listen to it. Pharaoh's heart was what? Was hardened. The God who can harden the heart and soften the heart. That night, the king could not sleep. Oh, ah. If I were you, I'll get angry. Because until you see those things, you can't have faith for them. You hear what I said? Until you see those things, you can't have faith for them to happen in your life. You have to see them. And some of you, some, when I look at you, you are too comfortable. Sometimes I wish I could remove the chair from you, from where you are sitting, so that you sit on the floor and see. You can't be comfortable in this church. Two of us. Shout glory, shout glory. Shall I continue as you end here? You are all tired then. And you, let me go to Galatians, uh, Genesis chapter 12, so that you can see a picture of what I'm just sharing. You see. Galatians chapter what? Eh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Are we there? Yes, now, we, where is it? Now, the Lord has said unto, are we there? Yes, look up, please. Look up. Uh, everyone, look up. Your head is down. It means you are sleeping. Shout glory. glory. It's a special New Year service. So, you have to catch this. This has to do with money. It has to do with what? Is money good or money is bad? 
Is that not true? Is money good or bad? God is interested in us having money. Is that not sh shocking? God is interested in us having health. Living, not being sick and healing. No. Even when at this time where you are still sick, he wants to heal you. Then he's also interested in you working in health. And he's interested in you working in wealth. He sat down one day. He said, hey, John. Do you know what I wish? I wish above all things that all my children prosper. They live in health. Even as they are so prosperous. John said, yes sir, yes sir. Yes. Let me write this one down. <laughs> then he wrote it down. Is that not powerful? powerful health is important. There are two very important things in the life of every individual. Health and wealth. I'm going to spend my whole life striving with the spirit to live in health. You know what I said? Yes, sir. So that when you have bought the jet for me, you are not on dialysis. <laughs> and you are checking your feet to say, Minas was so Yesu. That is not when to look for healing and health. This is the time. You are striving. We ought to walk in health, two of us. And wealth. Somebody's wealth, all his hard earned money was used to pay for hospital bill. And ended up dying by that same sickness. Is that no strange in this life? Some people's pension. Some people sold their cars, houses, to save themselves from dying because they were sick. But they still died of the sickness. And the remaining, the, the balance of the wealth were all enjoyed by the family. Is that not strange? So don't play with health and wealth. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, or Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy, thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. Mm -hmm. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. Is that not powerful? This is a blessing on Abraham. And I'll bless them that bless you. And curse him that curse you. And in you shall all nations or families of the earth be blessed. That was Genesis chapter 12. From verse, from verse what? 3. Eh? 1 to 3. So it was in Genesis chapter 12 that the gospel was preached to Abraham. Verse 3. Do you see there? When God said that, in you shall all families on the earth be blessed, he had made a promise to Abraham. He had made what? Then Galatians says, the scripture foreseen that a time was going to come where that promise would be fulfilled. First spoke about the blessing or preached about the blessing to Abraham. The promise was because of the church that was to come. But after the promise, because the promise came before the covenant, don't ever forget it. You see that argument. <laughs> you see that argument that Paul was making in Galatians chapter <laughs> in Galatians chapter three from verse seven, going to twenty six. Paul was making an argument there. I wish I had time to go through all of that. I can't have that time today. We'll do it one of the services, maybe on a Wednesday. And I was trying to say, that's why I say that, note that the promise was first before the covenant. The promise was in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3. The covenant was in Genesis chapter 15. Go there. Because if you catch this, and I take you to Galatians, you know that I call it was Oshina by Bonya Gonodi. I don't hold this word in vain. Two of us. <laughs> Obi, yes, did you understand that scripture? Yes, Who also understood that scripture? I don't bear the, the word in vain at all. <laughs> Obi, Obi. It looks like Pastor Ben and I can confuse all of you right now. 
Oh, I want you to stand up and look. Check. Don't, don't, don't come in. Make sure you don't come here. Just stand up. Okay, sit down. Just look around and see. Those who are confused by that statement alone. Let's look around. <laughs> For he buried not the rod in vain. Romans chapter 13. Is that not true? That's in Romans chapter 10. That's confused you. So Genesis chapter what? Okay, wait. Go to from Genesis chapter 12. Have you, we've read 1 to 3, right? Genesis chapter 15 from, from verse 1 to 6 to 9. The promise was to include the seed of Abraham after Christ. The covenant was to extend the blessings to the seed of Abraham after the flesh. Hey. Whoever I just said. So we said Genesis chapter 12 is where the promise is, right? Let's read Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham. I want to read about this one, another scripture. Don't miss the third one. Okay? After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield, and thy exceeding great reward. Continue. There's what we call character studies. Sometimes you have to do studies on some of these men. And Abraham said, Lord God, what would thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer, or Eliza of Damascus. Now continue. That was what Abraham asked God. Abraham. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is my heir. No one born in my house is my heir. Is that true? Now continue. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thy, thine heir. He was talking about Ishmael. But he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thy heir. He was talking about Isaac. Now continue. That was God speaking to Abraham. You see, they were interacting. And he brought him forth abroad, outside, and said, look now toward the heaven. Look up toward the heaven. And tell the stars, if thou be, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. You see it here again. So you see it in Genesis chapter what? 12 verse 3. In this shall all nations be blessed. Then Genesis chapter 15, God takes him out and says, look at the stars. Then Abraham looks at the stars. He says, you see the, all the stars that you see, that you cannot count. He says, this is how your seed will be. Repeating the same thing he said. Did you hear that? Then, God was talking about the seed, which is one seed, Isaac. So how come he showed him the stars? Because God was seeing us in Abraham. Amen. Now continue. And Abraham believed the Lord. And the Lord counted it to him for righteousness. This is powerful. This is another preaching. Continue. Continue. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought you out of you are, I don't know how to pronounce that one, of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. Continue. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? You see now, the conversation has come to a land on the earth. A land. Huh? Now, God is bringing the whole thing to the seed of Abraham after the flesh. In Genesis 12, he gives him a promise. Why? Because God had a foresight concerning the church that is to come. So he gave Abraham a promise. The purpose of that promise that in you shall all nations be blessed which is a preaching of the gospel of blessing, is so that the seed of Abraham after faith will be included in the blessing of Abraham. Write that one down. The seed of Abraham after faith. How have you been singing that song? Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. If you have, seen that, have, you, have you sang that song before? Yes, or you have sang, give me a wave and let me see. If you have sang that song before, did Abraham give birth to you? <laughs> so why do you say that? 
because you are the seed of Abraham, the church is the seed of Abraham. What is it, the seed? The child of Abraham after faith. So that the same way Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness, that is the same way you also believe God in the Lordship of Jesus and it's also counted to you as righteous. So the same act that made Abraham righteous is the same act that makes you righteous. And because of that, you are qualified in the sight of God to be the seed, the child, the offspring of Abraham according to faith. Did you hear that? According to faith. Then there is a child of Abraham that Abraham gave birth to, Isaac. Isaac gave birth to Jacob. Jacob gave birth to. That is the children of Abraham or the offspring of Abraham after the flesh. The lineage of Abraham after biological order. Did you see that? That is the, that's what we call the seed of Abraham after the flesh. So for God to be able to extend the blessings he has given to Abraham and I'll show you what the blessing did to Abraham, to his seed his biological seed like you and my own for, you to, for Abraham to be able to extend the blessings God had put upon his life on his biological seed from Isaac to Jacob, even Ishmael had a, 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 a stake in it uh, throughout to Joseph and all of that to the Israelites where we get uh, to Jacob where we get the Israelites from because it was Jacob whose name was changed to Israel. Amen. That's biological order. He had to establish a covenant with God. Did you hear that? It is that covenant that we are about to read in Genesis 15. So that automatically, if Abraham gives birth to you and they name you Kweku Bonsam, once Abraham gives birth to you by that covenant, the blessing of Abraham is extended to you for you to experience the same thing Abraham experienced because of the blessing. You hear what I just said? That is the, that is the children of Abraham after biological order. After the, we call it after the flesh. It's the King James English. Amen. If you are writing Prince Living Translation, you say after biological order. And that is where we get Isaac. That's where we get what Jacob and Esau and all the 12 tribes of Israel, Reuben, all of those, they all came from the biological order of Abraham. And so, God made a covenant. That's what we are coming to read right now. But before he made that covenant in Genesis 15, in Genesis 12, he had given a promise. That promise was waiting for one day, one day, when Jesus comes, Amen. Amen. And through Jesus, all nations can believe in Jesus just like Abraham believed. Like we have done. Have we believed in Jesus? Yes, sir. But when this was taking place, were we there? Was Jesus there? So, the purpose of the promise was to include the seed of Abraham after faith in the blessings of Abraham. Did you hear that? That's the purpose of the promise that God gave to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. The purpose of that promise was to include the seed of Abraham after faith in the blessings of Abraham. Then the purpose of the covenant was to include the biological children of Abraham in the blessing. See, God is wise. So he's not leaving any out. Come on, shout glory. Now, you see that this is verse what? Eight. Go back to seven. Go back to six and let me see. It says, and Abraham believed in the Lord. Do you see that? And he counted. So when God said, Abraham said, I believe, sir. And God said, because you have believed my word and you believed in me what I have said, I, you, are, you are righteous. I have made you righteous. So Abraham believed God. And God counted him for righteousness. But when God was doing this to Abraham, he had a foresight or a foreknowledge, which we always see. And that foresight, he was seeing ahead that a seed, a particular seed of Abraham was going to come called Christ. And out of that Christ, 
many people will also come to believe like Abraham believed. Whoever I just said there. That is what we, we are the church of Jesus Christ. We are the seed of Abraham in the order of faith. Because we also believe. Did, you, did Abraham give birth to you? But did you believe in Christ Jesus? Now, did Abraham still believe in God? Yeah. It's the same thing. So by that, we are made the seed of Abraham through our confession of faith. Is this not simple English? But do you understand what I just said? So, that is that. Then, there is the seed of a biological order which came through the covenant that God made with Abraham. This is the covenant. Now, continue. And he believed the Lord and it was counted to him for righteousness. Uh -huh. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that, that brought you out of you are, whether you or all or are, we can't pronounce, of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. Uh -huh. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? Uh -huh. And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, a sea goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, a turtle dove of three years old. Uh, this one is not three years. And a young pigeon. Now continue. And he took unto him all this and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another. But the best he did not divide. Continue. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. Continue. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham. And lo, an horror of great darkness fell upon him. Him continue. And he said unto Abraham, Know of surety, of surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them. And they shall afflict them 400 years. You see now? So now, Abraham made a covenant with God through that sacrifice. Listen. This one, God demanded the sacrifice, two of us. There's a time we demand sacrifice. We say, God will say, take three years. This one to three years. This one two years. How important sacrifice is in the blessing. But I don't talk about that today because it looks like the whole thing has become Chinese movie to some of you. Amen. And he said unto Abraham, know of a surety. So at this time, God has started dealing with Abraham and giving him a prophecy concerning his biological seed. It is this prophecy that was fulfilled from Isaac to Jacob to Joseph. When Joseph became the prime minister and was taken to Egypt, and became a prime minister in Egypt. And then Joseph. I mean, you know about the story of Joseph. If you know, lift up your hands and let me see. Oh, if you know it, lift up your hands and let me see. Do you know about the story of Joseph? So, and Joseph became a prime minister. And then Joseph grew old and died. Two of us. And Pharaoh at that time had given Joseph a particular plot of land where he and his relatives were. When Joseph died, the relatives of Joseph were multiplying. Remember, Joseph comes from Jacob, two of us. How do you know that Joseph comes from Jacob? Reuben, Simon, all those things. And to Joseph and Benjamin. But Joseph was picked out of them. So now, that is the, the biological generational lineage or children of what? Of Abraham, biologically. Descendants upon descendants. True or false? Yes. Well, do you get what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? Hmm. This is very simple. Then Joseph dies. And then the Joseph descendants, which also Abraham's descendants, and Jacob's descendants, and Isaac's descendants, all. Joseph's descendants starts multiplying and becoming big and great in Egypt, the foreign land. Then the Bible says that there was a king that arose. And a, there was a pharaoh that arose. Apart from the pharaoh that, that Joseph worked with, that, that pharaoh had died, that king. Another one arose who knew nothing about any Joseph and realized that these people were strangers here, yet they were multiplying and turned them into slaves. Now, that is what God was predicting to Abraham 
at this time. So he was dealing with Abraham this time after the biological order. Look at what I just said there. And then the Israelites, you don't read your Bible, go and read it well. Genesis. They went into slavery, two of us. They were in slavery for more than 400 years, that even God said. And one day God said that your crying has come up to me. Moses, let me send you. Then we have the Israelites coming out, crossing the Red Sea and all of those things. They were all the generation of Abraham after the flesh. But because they were the, gen they were the generation of Abraham after the flesh, they had the extension of Abrahamic blessing working from Isaac who reaped a hundredfold and was envied uh, to Joseph who became a prime minister to Jacob, to Joseph to, to the Jews so even though they went into slavery when they were leaving Egypt the scripture says that they did not live with lack he left they, they left not uh, without silver and gold they left with silver and gold Yes, and there was none feeble among them. What happened? The divine orchestration of the spirit. Who heard that? So the blessing worked under the flesh and the blessing is working now in the lives of those who are the children of Abraham after the order of faith. What does that mean after the order of faith? After the order of believing in God and confessing him just like Abraham did. So when the Israelites were leaving Egypt, the Bible says that God planted them. That means that God told Moses, tell the Israelites to, to go to the Egyptians and take their gold and take their earrings and take all those ornaments and all that. And they took the ornaments and God made the Egyptians see the Israelites in a way that they couldn't go back for their ornaments again. So the Israelites left Egypt with ornaments of gold and all of those silver and all those things to make sure that the blessing works even before they left, they left Egypt and took them through the wilderness and took care of them. He fed them in the wilderness. The scripture says God furnished a table for them in the wilderness. Then from the wilderness, as they were going, God said that, God had told Abraham that your descendants will inherit this land. But many years had come and gone, 400 years plus. And other people, other nations who were not Israelites and were not the descendants of Abraham had occupied the land. So then God had to move with them and deal with those people as his enemies and take their lands and give to the Israelites. We heard what I just said there. Until they actually entered the promised land and inherited the promised land. Who has said the story about the promised land in Sunday school? Who are, if you have heard the lift up, let me see. When the Israelites inherited the promised land. So God told them in the Deuteronomy, I'll give you lands that you did not build. How, lands that you did not buy. Houses that you did not build. And he actually did that for them. Because the blessing of Abraham was working on his descendants, his biological descendants. We had what I just said there. Is that powerful? powerful yeah. That's about the flesh. Then we come to the faith. The faith one. We'll go to Galatians chapter 3 next time. Come on, shout glory. glory. But before we go there to the faith, take us to Genesis chapter 13. Let me show you what the blessings did for Abraham. So when we say the blessing is a divine influence, a divine what? In the life of a person, a divine influence of the Holy Ghost, in the life of a person. Now Abraham left his family. True or false? In Genesis twelve, in Genesis twelve, there was famine in the land. Go to Genesis chapter thirteen. He left his family. Can we end with that one? So you see the divine influence of the blessings. Come on, shout glory. glory. Is this not powerful? Oh, well, I said, is this not powerful? Is that Vanessa? Is this not powerful? Is it powerful? So Genesis chapter what, 13, 
from verse 1 and then 5 to 6 also. The operation of the blessings that was on Abraham. Abraham had not, he just left. Then God said, I'll bless those who bless you. I'll make you a nation. That's Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 3. That's what God said. That's what God did what? That's what God said. I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. In you shall all nations be blessed. Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 13. Before Genesis chapter 13, there was famine in the land. And Abraham was running helter skelter with all the blessings on his head at that time. Then he managed to enter Egypt. Then when he entered Egypt, suddenly, the Egyptian king took interest in Abraham's wife. True or false? And he said, Abraham, it looks like I'm, I'm interested in this, your, is it your sister or your wife? Then Abraham, out of fear, said, oh, that's my sister. Then the king took Abraham's sister home. But all that taking the sister home, which is Abraham's wife, was the Holy Spirit's way. That is a divine what? Orchestration. It means that what I'm trying to tell you is that everything that ev the Holy Ghost can divinely orchestrate something into your hands that you'll be shocked. And it's not like you don't deserve it. You deserve it because you are blessed. He take it from somebody's hands and give it to you. Or take it from somebody's life and give it to you. In his mind, in God's mind, that is how the blessing is supposed to operate. In our mind, we are supposed to struggle and struggle and struggle. So I change today, I change today. So Abraham went up out of Egypt. So Pharaoh took Abraham's wife because Abraham said, she's my sister. And then God in his own workings in his own workings made it, you can read the story, Genesis 12, Genesis 13 such that Abraham found favor with the king and released Abraham's wife to Abraham. True or false? But when he released Abraham's wife, because the blessing had been given to him, so we are not work, working in the Adamic blessing in Genesis. We are working in the Abrahamic blessing in Genesis. You hear what I said? Don't forget that. Let me tell you how it worked. Then, Pharaoh gave Sarah back to Abraham and added certain things to it. Goat, cattle, gold, and things just to compensate Abraham. Oh, come on, shout glory. So Abraham left to Egypt with nothing. Then Abraham came out of Egypt with substance. The blessing on Abraham through the divine operation of the Holy Ghost. Because if you say, you are, it's my sister, you are the one who lied to me, two of us. So I'll just give her back to you and say, leave my country. But what caused him to add substance to, to, to Abraham? The blessing. That is the wealth side. The blessing. So in Genesis chapter 13, we are told, can we all read it there? Is it there? Let me read it here. And Abraham, or Abraham, went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. Now continue. That's, that's chapter 13, right? Yes, sir. Oh, did you see, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Yes, oh, you're already asleep and gone home. Hey, I went to you. Are you here or you have put the camera here? Come on, shout glory. And Abraham was very rich. Can we all read together? One to go. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He went with nothing. By the blessing, he came with something. But you read how the Holy Ghost worked it out. That is what makes the blessing a divine influence of the Spirit. Do you, do, you, do you understand it now? Yes, sir. Uh, this is what happened. He came with gold. But not only that. Let's continue. Let me read. Continue. And he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel. Unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning. Between Bethel and High. 
Continue. Unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Oh. And Lot also, you see that? Even Lot that had an association with Abraham, God blessed. Two of us. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents. Do you see that? Now continue. Let me shock, let me shock you in verse 5. Continue. Where are we now? Shout glory. Shout glory. And the land was not able to bear them. So he came with the flocks, you see, the gold and all of that. He brought them. The blessing multiplied it. That is the divine operation of the spirit to multiply whatever you touch like this. See your hands like this. As you touch pure water to sell, it begins to multiply. Because you are blessed. So there's a divine influence by a person called the Holy Ghost to make sure that that, that that small thing is multiplied. Are you getting what I'm saying on the blessing? And the land was not able to bear them. The new translation will help us. That they might even dwell together. For their substance was so great so that they could not dwell together. That's verse what? Six. Now give us the NIV or any translation for five and six and see what happened. So even though he came, when they settled, Lot also had his own substance. The Bible says that the substance so multiplied that the land could not bear their substance. Do you know what that means? He didn't say one plot of land. Though. He said he moved to Bethel and to the south. The whole region. The, the oh, Lebe, Atoli, Kapalaka. This year, you will experience the blessings. So open your heart to the blessing. Do you see that? That's why we fast and we pray. The Holy Ghost can turn this table into... I say it every time. Eh? One day he will do it in this church. The table turned to a human being here. Now Lord, who was moving about with Abraham, also had flocks and heads and tents. Uh -huh. What translation is that? But the land could not support them while they stayed together for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together. You, did you hear that? When you can't stay with somebody because of the greatness of your possessions. Now continue. Let me shock you there. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Are you, there? Are you online? You online? Are you there? And quarreling arose between Abraham's headsmen and the headsmen of Lot. The Canaanites and the Parasites were also living in the land at that time. They were all in the land. But Abraham was so great and rich and wealthy. And Lot also who went with Abraham too was so rich and wealthy that the land could not contain them because of the operations of the blessing in what they were doing. Shall glory. So when the blessing is on your life, the operation of the spirit can call customers to buy all your products within one day. Bring who, who partners Sponsor all your things within two seconds. Within how many seconds? Two, two seconds. Two seconds. Hello, is this you? Okay, I'm Mr. So and so. I want to meet you. It's a done deal. I release that operation right now. Amen. The blessings of the Lord. All this, all this. It shows you that. Look at all this you are talking about. Look at where God has positioned us. Two of us. Lift up and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Did you see how the blessing went? When you go home. Go back to Genesis chapter 12 and 13. Read it for yourself, for your sake. Is that not powerful? And you just wake up and be shouting, Malagadosh. If this is how the blessing of praise, they are big, I'm big, I'm big. You speak in tongues. Abraham was so great. You have not become great like Abraham. You are snoring and sleeping at 12 a.m. Is that not true? It's true, sir. So we will leave it here. Then we continue maybe from a Wednesday service. Amen. The classroom. We are excited that we continue doing the classroom. Abrahamic blessings. I'll be sharing with you a lot of things how this, how this works throughout. Scriptures upon scriptures. It will help you to walk in wealth. It will help you to be a giver. 
I've not even entered into the giving. I'll show you what actually happened. Abraham, there are three things that caused these blessings to be on Abraham. If you do the same three things Abraham did, you walk in blessings of Abraham. I'll tell you now. If you give me a seat, I'll tell you. Raise the white envelope and let me see. Come on, shout glory. Lift up your right hand wherever you are. Just thank the Lord for his word. Thank the Lord for his word. Thank the Lord for this word that has come. Mashataka lagadosh. Mashotoko polo koshataya. Malite kete poro kotostaya. 